ماذا لو أن الكفاءات الجزائرية من كافة أنحاء العالم تجتمع معا؟ ماذا لو أن هذه الأدمغة بمختلف تخصصاتها تتكاثف لتطوير التعليم والبحث العلمي للنهوض بالجزائر في مختلف المجالات؟ هل تعتقد أن هذا مستحيل؟ أبدا فالحلم يتحول إلى حقيقة من خلال الشبكة العالمية للعلماء الجزائريين إناس رغم أن إناس هي مؤسسة غير ربحية وتعتمد فقط على تبرعات الأفراد إلا أنها استطاعت أن تبني جسورا من التعاون وتبادل الخبرات بين أبناء وطننا الحبيب من الداخل ومن مختلف بلدان العالم ساعية لصقل المهارات واحتواء المواهب وتبادل الخبرات وإيصال التجارب النافعة لخدمة الوطن <تصفيق> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم مرحبا بكم معنا دون نوفو ويبينار دو لا سيري ادفانسز ان جيو انرجيز اند رينيوبلز معكم محمد عمروش اي ام ذا انيسيتيف ليدر اند ذا بروجيكت ليدر اوف ذا جيو ساينس جروب ويز ايناس اند توداي وي ار وي ام فيري هابي تو ويلكم ون اوف اور كوليجز ان شلون برجي تو ديليفر اور ناينث ويبينار عبد الحق بن خليفه السلام عليكم عبد الحق اي هوب يو كان هير مي ناو بيكوز وي هاف هافينغ سم تروبلز بيفور كان يو هير مي I think you are muted. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we try to fix the problem uh, quickly. Uh, let me just have a quick introduction of our keynote speaker today. Uh, Abdul Haq Ben Khalifa is a senior, senior geosteering and reservoir mapping geologist at Schlumberger in North Africa with over 12 years experience in the oil field. And he has an uh, engineer degree in petroleum geology from Mohamed Bougara University in Boumerdas and a master's degree in sedimentary basins geology from Qasdi Merbah University in Wergla. Abdelhaq's early career started as borehole geologist and focused on processing and interpretation of borehole image logs to understand the geological behavior of a reservoir. Uh, Abdelhaq now focuses on well placement services, landing and geosteering horizontal wells using logging while drilling, LWD tools, and uh, drilled over 70 horizontal wells in more than 15 countries since 2018. He's co-leading projects of North Africa, Algeria, and Libya, and uh, to place horizontal and re-entry wells in real time while mapping the reservoir's extension in 3D ultra wells. So I hope we can... Can you hear me, Abdul Haq? Are you here? Yes. Good morning. Shukran, shukran. So uh, I just, uh, I just uh, thank you very much. We have actually we're having small technical problem, but we are trying to solve this out. Can you share your screen, Abdelhaq, because we can't see the slides, and uh, I can give you the mic to do the presentation. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Okay, we can see the slide. That for Abdelhaq, the floor is yours. Yeah. Salam alaikum. Uh, good morning, good evening. Uh, thank you, uh, Mohammed, for uh, this uh, introduction. Uh, and thank you for all the attendees that uh, join us uh, today for this uh, webinar uh, called uh, The Art of Geosteer Lock in the uh, Inaccessible uh, Energy Reserves. Uh, um, first of all, let's talk about the, the energy sources that Uh, we are exploiting in this in our planet. So we have different uh, type of of, uh, of energy resources, fossil, uh, renewable, uh, uh, and different other uh, energies that we need to make our industry and make our day-to-day uh, -day life uh, moving. And today I'm going to focus on the uh, um, uh, on the fossil energy, which is the oil and gas industry. And one of the topics is the uh, geosteering or the well placement, where we talk about uh, drilling horizontal wells in, in real time and having the possibility to, uh, to adapt or adjust our real time trajectory versus plan uh, and have a, a more uh, ability to, to access more uh, reserves. So if we talk about well placement or geosteering, we mean by the real-time uh, process in an interactive approach to construct co construction combining technology and people to deliver optimal placement, uh, placed well uh, in a given geological setting to maximize the production or the induction performance. So what, what we mean by this, imagine if you are uh, landing 
an airplane into um, uh, into the runway, à l'aéroport, à l'atterrissage. And once the pilot tried to land the airplane, he find that the uh, runway is moving up and down, left and right. So he need to adjust his uh, trajectory to land the airplane uh, uh, at the airport safely. So this is the same way what we do with the horizontal uh, wells um, to increase the production uh, or injection performance in a, in, a, in, a, in a specific field. So it's a planned interactive placement of the wellbore using geological criteria and real-time measurements. And for that, we have two components, the uh, footage drilled or the meters drilled per, per, uh, per, per, per day. So reducing, that means reducing the flat time of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the horizontal drilling and increasing the ROP, the rate of penetration, la vitesse d'avancement de, 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 de forage. In the other hand, we have the reservoir exposure. So by that enhancing reservoir description, by placing the well uh, in the best uh, property zone and maximize the length of the, uh, of the well exposed to the reservoir. So imagine uh, uh, for, for, for a horizontal well, you, we usually uh, define three targets. So the first target is the entry point with the reservoir. And the second target is the, uh, the landing point where we want to place uh, the well in the middle, uh, at the top part of the reservoir, anywhere we want. And the second and uh, the third point, which is the TD point, where um, uh, where that defines the uh, the trajectory or the or the length of the uh, horizontal section. But the reality is always different. The geology always gives us uh, surprises, and we try uh, to reduce the uncertainties to and place the uh, horizontal well as much as we can inside the reservoir even uh, with the uh, geological events that we encounter. For the well placement, uh, we have three components uh, that, uh, that make this thing works. We have the uh, software and IT uh, technology, the real-time data transmission technology, 2D and 3D visualizer, visualization, uh, data integration uh, and virtual reality recently. The second component is the downhole tools and data, uh, which is the combination of the borehole assembly and various tools that uh, measure the formation properties based on each uh, 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 tool we need. Uh, we have the uh, logging while draining, the measurement while draining, and the directional draining tools that uh, make this uh, full job uh, complete. And the most important uh, component are the people and the process. The client, ge geoscientist and draining, the well placement engineer, and the team coordinator. We call them the decision team because they are key to analyze and assess all the information that uh, uh, we have from the downhole tools transmitted through uh, real-time measurements into softwares uh, to, to get the best decision for, for each uh, horizontal uh, training. And for best prepare any horizontal well, um, we have three phases. The first phase, the pre-job uh, phase, where we gather data, QC, try to make model uh, of what we are expecting from each uh, measurement to give us in such uh, condition. Optimize the well trajectory, optimize the BHA selection uh, or the tools that we need to put uh, uh, downhole and also surface preparation before we start uh, drilling in the section. The execution phase, which is 24-7 uh, real-time collaboration between the juice steering team, the field team in the rig, the uh, geologists training all the people together and it's 24 7 uh, real-time support where we uh, get the data from the rig it transmit to various uh, platform for, for example for slumber j we have interact for data transmission and picture for the uh, interpretation and visualization and then there is a 
continuous interaction between the well placement engineers, the geologists at Zurich, at the town, to get us the decision for each uh, event that we encounter. And then, once we the training level, we have the post job phase, we get, gather the results, we review them, we update the models uh, that we had existing. We, we, we also lesson learns, learn from any situation that uh, we had uh, during the uh, real time execution. And then also prepare for the next strategy improvement for the next well, because all the results of the post job are used into the next uh, well pre job and uh, and uh, and go on the uh, which the, the most one of the most important parts of the uh, this uh, geo steering is the uh, communicating communicating communication points because once we drill any formation for example we drill one meter we have new data which is transmitted uh, via MWD measurement wire training uh, to the surface where we visualize them and analyze the difference between that meter drilled and the meter uh, before and see what changed and, and what caused that and we recognize everything and then take the best geosteering uh, decision using the, the softwares uh, we have so it's a loop that continue working every time if we see change, we have to, to a situation and take action. If there is no change, we continue with the same strategy and continue the same trajectory. For those who are not familiar very well with the uh, drain part, so this is what we call the borehole, uh, borehole assembly, uh, drain borehole assembly. So we have a bit, draining bit, which is uh, draining the formation for us. Uh, we have the uh, uh, two families uh, or two types or three let's say three because we have the uh, the, uh, the 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 tricon bits and then we have the pdc uh, type of, of bits each one is designed to drill certain uh, type of formation and then we have the directional uh, tools where we have three families the uh, the uh, the point the bit which we are known usually as a motor BHA and the second family are push the bit or rotary steerable system and then there is the combined uh, family which is using both push the bit and point the bit to get the best of, uh, of, of what both of them are giving us in, in different formations and then we put the logging wide drilling uh, tools to measure the formation. We can measure various properties of, of the formation from gamma ray, uh, resistivity, neutron density, sonic uh, pressure measurement, different. So we, we put them in a such way where fit the purpose of the drain of, of that horizontal well in, in, in the geological uh, complexity or challenge that we are facing in that uh, field or area. And then we have the MWD, the measurement wire drain, which uh, are uh, used first to power the, the other tools, give them electricity and make them uh, work. And the second, uh, the second function is to transmit data to surface via uh, mad pulse telemetry for Schlumberger, for example. And then we can add more LWD tools that we need, for example, uh, density, uh, source, uh, neutron, it depends. And then we need a power simulator to see if this MWD can generate enough power for all those tools uh, or, or no. If no, we have to redesign the BHA in such a way that everything is working and there is no uh, communication loss or, or any, anything like that. Uh, now let's talk about the geosteering evolution or the geosteering method. Uh, we have at least five methods or five generation of the geosteering from the uh, simple conventional login uh, tools, uh, basic, we, uh, and then the second one 
uh, by introduction of real-time uh, borehole images. So we got uh, extra information of the formation dip, which has helped us uh, geosteering uh, and following the formation. As you can notice, um, 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 this uh, evolution is based on depth of investigation of each uh, uh, technology and time. Uh, the third method, or yeah, uh, once we started exploiting uh, the electromagnetic signal, uh, because which is which can travel further into the formation and not and, and not just uh, uh, sitting or reading um, uh, at the borehole wall, so we can map up to five meters uh, with this technology using electromagnetic signal where it's. Uh, detect any resistivity boundary or conductive boundary and give us the distance to this boundary uh, to to make a, to make the, our job easier and place the, the well at a certain distance from top or bottom if it's conducted and then we thought to some changes and then we introduced the reservoir mapping while draining where we can map up to 30 meters uh, into the, uh, the into the formation up and 30 meters down. We introduced the geosphere, uh, which give us a full picture uh, of the reservoir behavior and change uh, in term of, uh, from resistivity point of view. And then recently, last year, 2020 and 2021, we introduced uh, the geosphere HD, which have uh, high resolution and much deeper depth of investigation up to 75 uh, meters into the reservoir up and down and also we introduced the uh, the geosphere 360 which is give us 3d uh, mapping of the reservoir uh, not just up and down but in in in, the, in different uh, direction uh, of the of the reservoir let me go uh, method by method and explain it i will try uh, because if you can see those two methods the first two methods are reactive uh, methods because we, we need to we need to exit the reservoir or, or the sensor need to 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 touch that new formation uh, to be able to, to to measure it so Sometimes we are already late and already uh, out of the reservoir to take action and adjust our trajectory. With the increase of depth of investigation, we are working in the proactive domain. So we no longer wait to exit the, the reservoir and we take uh, measurement or take uh, decisions to adjust trajectory and stay uh, as much as we can uh, into the reservoir. So I will go one by one. Uh, first of all, the first uh, method, um, we call it model compare update or correlation, uh, where we use the offset well logs from the, uh, from the wells drilled close by the, 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 the target well. Um, we need formation tops also to define what we are drilling. And then we need surfaces or horizons from seismic or from the existing model. And we need a planned trajectory to make it work. From those three uh, inputs, we can create a curtain section with just structure, and then we include the, the, the planned trajectory. And then we can, uh, uh, from the offset well logs, we, we, we generate uh, properties for each log, or what we call log squaring, of each uh, log, for example, this one gamma ray, this one resistivity, and then uh, populate it into our curtain section to have a curtain section model. This model give us the uh, the modeled logs along the planned trajectory. So at this position of the trajectory, it gives us what is the expected uh, measurement of each uh, formation uh, and, and generate log that we will use it uh, later. So what we do, once we start draining, we, uh, we have the expected logs. And then if you can see here, the, uh, the gamma ray, for example, the green one is the real time. 
and the red is showing the resistivity, for example. So uh, we can see that there is a mismatch between the real-time log and the red one, which is the expected based on the model and the trajectory. So what we do, we try to adjust our model to fit the real-time trajectory so that that changed our position in this case uh, uh, from the uh, top of the reservoir to the base of the reservoir and we have all the logs matching together the real time and the uh, uh, model one so this is basically basically what we do but it has some limitations we can reduce more uh, more uncertainties with uh, having the information of uh, formation dip so if you are draining at this point, we can uh, interpret this uh, boundary, for example, and we have this sinusoid, we can calculate the uh, true dip and the apparent dip. The apparent dip means the, draining, the dip along the trajectory. So that helps us uh, where the is dipping, try to actually uh, parallel to the the same way here where we are cutting photography seeing this in the reverse this one with them um, with the we get the uh, formation dip value and try to adjust our trajectory those are two two methods of the the first two methods of well placement the third one where when once we introduced the electromagnetic signal and, tr and started exploiting it so we can see deeper into the formation uh, and, and, and avoid exiting the, the reservoir uh, exiting the reservoir ahead, uh, ahead of us. So the tool is here, the sensor is here, maybe behind a bit, but we can generate uh, what we call inversion that give us a full picture of the reservoir and help us uh, draining the trajectory within the reservoir. How that it, how that works, or if we can compare between the this uh, uh, technology and the conventional geostealing. So the conventional, this is the bit. We have all the logs. Uh, I mean, the sensors, the tools are twelve meters behind the bit. And then, once we start uh, measuring that we are exiting the reservoir, for example, in this case from the top, the bit is already out. And we need at least hundreds of meters to come back to the uh, to the reservoir and 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 and, and drill back to the base on. With periscope or with the distance boundary technology, we can map that change or map that top of formation up to five meters ahead. So the bit is here, the sensor is here. We can map five meters. We can see this top is 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 coming to us, or we are going toward the top, we just need to adjust our trajectory to stay within the reservoir. And this is the beauty of what we are doing every day. Uh, for that, uh, we are using, uh, as I said, electromagnetic um, uh, signal with uh, different uh, sensors or, or transmitter and receivers. And, and we are combining the, 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 the axial, trans, uh, un, axial antenna with uh, tilted antenna and uh, transverse antenna together to get uh, measurement that help us uh, to interpret where we are exactly. Uh, the output uh, from the tilted, uh, yeah, let, let me explain it this way. If we put transmit
Hello, Abdha, can you hear us? We can't hear you. I think we have some sound problem. Mm, no, we can't hear you. Uh, maybe you can you can log back with the, with your phone, uh, if possible. We apologize for our audience. We have some technical issues uh, we've been trying to fix <laughs> before the live. Yeah, we, we, I know we lost audio, so we are working on it. Uh, just be patient, please. Yes, can you try now? Yes. Yeah, now we can hear you. Yeah, so please go ahead. Sorry for that. Yeah, good. Sorry for that. We are facing this technical issue since uh, <laughs> two days. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, as I said, um, uh, if uh, um, the, the reason why we tilted a uh, few of the receivers to get some uh, uh, measurements that are uh, representative to the formation. If Imagine if we put transmitter and receiver the same ax, uh, uh, axial or transverse, the same angle. So we will not measure what change in the formation because, because we will always measure the same formation. If the receiver, we start different uh, measurements between transmitter and the receiver. And 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 uh, uh, what we notice from this this uh, technology or this tool that if we start, for example, uh, this is a, this is a resistive formation of ten ohms, for example, and then this one uh, a conductive one uh, of one ohm. So the electromagnetic signal goes always toward the uh, conductivity. Uh, this is the the physics. So whenever we start drilling, uh, we are facing the top. The tool is facing the top, and whenever we start rotating, uh, uh, we start uh, getting the signal increase, and we get the maximum signal when we are exactly facing the conductive uh, uh, boundary or, or layer. And then once we start continue rotating, we are getting away from this uh, conductive layer, so we see the signal is dropping until we are the opposite way of this conductive layer. We have the minimum signal, and then the signal starts to increase again once we are going back to this uh, conductive zone. So we will get a uh, sinusoid representative of the uh, of the formation uh, where it is uh, the, the, the signal uh, amplitude and, and uh, is based on the, the difference between the conductivity and resistivity. The, the 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 more the contrast we call it the contrast between the conductive and the resistive we can see better with this tool so with the outputs we have symmetrized directional curves anti-symmetrized directional curves and deep resistivity those each one is sensitive to 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 to, to things that uh, help us uh, constructing inversions or solution to to draw or map the formation uh, that we are drilling and help us also know where is the position or the 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 orientation of the boundary um, and if we have anisotropy or, or not the inversion of the solution we use different uh, inputs and compare them to the, uh, what we call solution and see which one we are uh, fitting that in our case. I'm not going to go deeper this uh, slide, but uh, just to say that the inversion or the solution, um, we have two types now. We have the stochastic inversions and that are using uh, probabilistic, probabilistic methods and give you, uh, for example, 90% of the cases are uh, mapping this formation at this position, for example, or at this depth, 
or it gives you that okay you are at this position you are uh, two meters or three meters away from the top and the, the environment is, is confident that this uh, is real and uh, yeah a lot uh, in real time to take our decisions the deterministic one are using limited or reduced uh, number of solutions just to the one that are fitting to the uh, to what to the environment that we are uh, drilling in and with that it limiting the processes and limiting the uh, number of iteration that do to give you uh, this solution now just to illustrate for you uh, how it works I'm, I'm sharing some examples from north africa and congo that give you an overview of how it works uh, this one uh, as you can see this lot of logs each one is is uh, defining the property and the one below the figure below is showing what we call the inversion so whatever you are seeing red representing high resistive uh, environment or layer whichever is blue representing conductive zone so the target that was fixed for us is to drill into the high resistive zone which represented representing hydrocarbons in a eight meter reservoir thick uh, so we were correlating uh, at the landing and then we used the distance to boundary or periscope uh, tool to map the top position so before we enter the reservoir we start the top position. So we are joining for trajectory. Uh, more we place our uh, trajectory in the middle of the reservoir where we were expecting good properties. Uh, and you can see here uh, that we were adjusting our trajectory down based on what we all the way. Uh, uh, reserve the uh, the uh, the steering we were almost around 40 meters shift between what seismic was telling us to be at TD point and the real TD that we drilled 40 meters is huge it doesn't mean that seismic is fault or uh, is not correct but the uncertainty is huge and our our role or our job is to reduce uncertainties in our world the second example is uh, also uh, another uh, 200 meters uh, drain uh, where we used the periscope to to land and steer the uh, horizontal section so as you can see before we enter the reservoir we map the formation is going slightly up with with one degree if i remember well and then we enter the reservoir all the logs shows that we entered the, the reservoir at the same uh, dvd expected from uh, periscope interpretation and then we drilled the whole drain section without exiting the reservoir and staying almost at the top of the reservoir to increase the life of the uh, producer well Next example from Congo, where I was physically there and, and, and physically de delivering this well. So they were drilling in sand injectites. Uh, the sand injectites are, uh, are not behaving like simple layers as we have here in Algeria or all over the world. So they are loose sands and by compression of the overburden, uh, so they get uh, escaped anywhere and make uh, like we find them in, in not in continuous or homogeneous layers but in uh, uh, in français. so from seismic they were expecting two three uh, sand lobes and we we were expected to drill uh, those sands with the specific And chip four 
they, they were they want to explore what's going on because they have some shapes from seismic but they want to 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 make it clear so we, we did it we drilled it with the periscope we had this the reddish zone which is uh, resistive sand uh, we exit sand one as planned enter sand uh, three we if taking this out we continue and try to, to understand what's going on here uh, and reconstruct this level that represents so we end up above comes mind of everyone that uh, how far we can detect or what determine what we can uh, the how far we get into the formation so the answer is there is three parameters that define how far we can how can uh, we can um, detect or map in, into the formation we have uh, the uh, frequencies that meter fire the signal with we have uh, frequencies and then the spacing between the transmitter and receiver the much spacing the bigger spacing the more signal or deeper signal we can collect the third point is the formation resistivity which we cannot control it's 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 uh, it's a, it, it's it's the reservoir, so each is a different uh, resistivity. So we can play with two uh, parameters, the, the frequencies and the spacing. So the, the idea came why we don't separate the transmitter river. In this way, we can design the beer chain in such a way that we can increase the space between the transmitter and receiver. And to make the signal travel far, the frequency. So this is what we did in 2014. We commercialized the Juniper, where we we uh, separate the transmitter from the uh, receiver one and receiver two, and we can even include a receiver sub to make the resolution higher. Uh, the applications of this uh, uh, reservoir scale mapping uh, wide draining service are uh, accurate landing. Uh, reservoir steering and reservoir map. So we put the transmitter in the BHA. This is the bit. We have the directional draining transmitter, some LWD to tools, receiver one, receiver two. We, we manipulate or we uh, uh, design our BHA uh, modularly uh, to get uh, our direction. In the beginning, we thought using it in Algeria as to to uh, eliminate the need of uh, draining a pilot hole because traditionally uh, the operators were draining a pilot hole to define the entry point of the reservoir and exit point or one oil water contact and then side track and drill the hotel well, which Add the cost for the operator, uh, uh, eliminate the pipe as well. Yeah, so we suggest to them to eliminate the need of draining the pilot well and go directly to the lateral section using a uh, geosphere. That works. Um, are draining the oil, going toward the reservoir. 30 meters, we start detecting the top of the reservoir. Yeah. Once we detect the top of the reservoir, we adjust our landing point based on, on where we want to stay. And then once we enter the reservoir, in in best cases we start mapping the oil water contact, and that allows us to maintain a safe distance from the oil water contact. We don't want to produce water, instead oil or gas, and uh, and make the life of the well longer. 
now this is an example from North Sea, from UK, where uh, this is the seismic, uh, what was uh, telling them, uh, also drilling in uh, sand injectites. From logs, offset wall logs, they have different uh, uh, different uh, um, features of the reservoir. This is for well one, for example, this is blocky sand with the high resistivity homogeneous. The well two, they have some insert some uh, intercalation in the middle which uh, affects resistivity and drop the resistivity in distance to boundary it, it wouldn't make us uh, able to interpret what's going on here here we just see changes but we don't know uh, uh, how deep that or what what's that but with juice here we're able to see at the worst case uh, mapping uh, up to 70 feet in this case uh, down and and also allow us to uh, allow us to, to interpret the, the formation or the horizons at the top and at the bottom where we can interpret it and export it to update the existing static models another also uh, where we were drilling in compartmentalized area where the formation is moving up and down and need a uh, trajectory uh, just to stay all the way within the reservoir. And where we had a limited window to, to, to drill with to stay within the uh, gas zone. Something wrong with the slides, I guess. Uh, well, we can see the slides, Abdelhaq. We can see them. Yeah. Slide. Yeah, but they are moving. So, uh, yeah, now, now it's moving. This is the, okay. the example from the North Sea, localized area, um, host and gravel and we need to stay as much as we can within the reservoir. Example of geosphere is our mapping water. Uh, we fluvial uh, reservoir lot of change um, into the formation Yeah, Abdulhaq, maybe you can exit to uh, you can exit presentation mode and then uh, go to the the slide you want to, to go to. Moving. Yeah, oh, it's moving. Good. Okay. Anyway, let's move uh, fluid development. Uh, identify various, uh, uh, for example, the top of the reservoir, the oil water contact, we can interpret it, internal layers in, inside the reservoir. 
uh, and if we try to analog that with what we have in the geology, we can see point bar, and the point bar is the point of the river uh, or, or um, of, of the river. So creating a, uh, or Uh, Abdul Haq, I think we lost the audio. If you can uh, join back my phone, please. <laughs> can you hear us, Abdul Haq? Uh, it's connecting. Please wait a minute. Can you hear us, Abdul Haq? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Sounds is good. Perfect. Please carry on. If you or or. Can you hear us, Abdul Haq? I think we, we lost the audio again. So if you can, uh, we also lost the slide, by the way. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yes, uh, we can see the slides and we can hear you. Yeah. Good. So some application of the mapping, we have landing, uh, reducing our pilot wells, uh, remote detection of reservoir top and structure, drilling reception and running speed optimization, also optimizing and planning the horizontal sections. The uh, second um, uh, application, the reservoir steering, which is uh, while drilling, increasing the debt pay, uh, increasing the production and recovery, uh, optimization, shade avoidance, and training risk reduction, like stacking, uh, and also uh, well construction cost control. Uh, the third uh, application is the reservoir mapping, uh, which is post draining uh, service or application that we, we, we try to interpret all the horizons that we were mapping in real time and update the existing static models uh, for, uh, to improve the reserve estimation and, and, uh, and integration with seismic model also. The last uh, service or uh, what we call the strategic drilling, uh, I want to introduce you something which is very new and, and we recently introduced it in 2020, 22, which is the Geosphere 360. Uh, designed for geostealing and reservoir mapping in any environment, um, improve uh, production, uh, steer multi dimensional geology, uh, accurate reserve uh, evaluation, and optimize completion design, uh, and also extend the field of life. Those are some of the benefits of this uh, technology. Uh, the difference between it and the other. Uh, um, technologies are uh, we were looking to the geology in let's say one dimensional or two dimensional view uh, so we were mapping only up the, the the trajectory and down the trajectory now we have the ability to measure in the 360 direction and and see whichever uh, formation change coming to us to to the left to the right and have the ability to adjust our azimuth uh, trajectory uh, to to chase the the most sand or the developed sand uh, 
in, into the, the, the reservoir. Um, give us also a 3D reservoir and steering to end flow uh, on cloud uh, because this one is using cloud to. to Us. Imagine we are the, the, this is the, the anticline, we are drilling into an anticline at the top of anticline, drilling horizontal section. And then we have the oil water contact here fixed. Once we start draining, we continue at this point and then the formation is coming down to us. So we exit the, the reservoir, which is normal geosteering or normal reservoir mapping. If we continue, we exit fully the reservoir and there, there will be no need to continue draining if we are outside the reservoir. Uh, also, if another case, if we are draining uh, the, the, the landing section and then we enter the reservoir and at a certain point we encounter a fault We encounter a fault. This is the top view and this is a direct view. So we encounter a fault. We exit the reservoir, and and this is standard geosteering case where we we, we don't need three uh, three dimensional uh, measurement to, to to know it or to act for that. In the case that we are drilling uh, laterally. So we land the well, we come in this way to the, to the left and try to drill. We encounter the fault, tilted fault, and then we exit the reservoir. In this case, with the standard 1D uh, inversion solution, we, it's not enough to know what's going on. We just exit the reservoir, but we don't know what's the, uh, the plane of the fault, what's the tip of the strike of the fault, we just exit and then uh, it's difficult to predict that or uh, proactively avoid that. Also in the case of drilling into a, a fault, or in this case injector well, we, we enter this uh, from this way, as you can see. And then once we enter the, the pay zone, we start to see, seeing the resistivity increase. Oh, oh sorry, the, the, uh, the, the, the resistivity decrease because this one, uh, water calling. Okay, how this tool, works it's the same as the uh, geosphere uh, electromagnetic using ele deep electromagnetic signal but this the, the way how we collect the signal uh, is different and the intensity of the signal also uh, is, is different so it gives us a real-time 3d uh, volumetric reservoir mapping and steering if you can see here how it construct transverse inversion not like the uh, the one D along the trajectory. This one is transverse with fixed step. For example, ten every ten meters, we can generate uh, an inversion that give us uh, the uh, the change of the the resistive uh, body. In this case, is red. So in this case. We, we can see this is the, the axial 1D or the 1D longitudinal resistivity inversion, this one. So we can see that we are doing inside the, the reservoir, resistive reservoir, and then it start to disappear. And we start entering a, a conductive zone. If we just take this solution, we will never know that uh, there is still a resistive sand to the left of the trajectory. We can only see that with the Geosphere 360 
um, transverse inversions that uh, uh, map for us the 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 resistive body uh, toward the left. In this case, the obvious uh, solution or decision is to turn the trajectory toward the left and chase the maximum of the uh, sand uh, body toward the left. As you can see here, we construct a 3D volumetric uh, 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 body of the sand and we can estimate the reserves based on that. It's three-dimensional mapping, uh, real-time 3D uh, transmission mud pulse smart uh, training pipes. We're working on training pipes uh, to transmit data from downhole to surface, and digital solution to to construct the the inversions uh, into the cloud and and integrate all uh, with the uh, the platforms that we are developing in the cloud currently the i will summarize i will conclude my webinar with these uh, applications and benefits of the geosphere 360 we have 3d reservoir steering uh, which improved the protection uh, 3d reservoir understanding uh, that helps uh, for accurate reserve in place evaluation uh, 3d reservoir dynamics optimized completion design and 3d development planning uh, 3D field development planning FDP to extend the field of the uh, life of the of the field by uh, planning uh, and, and understanding the reservoir behavior in the area, which is help us uh, better planning of the development of each field. Yeah, I hope uh, it wasn't that long, one hour. <laughs> Thank you uh, for your patience. Thank you for your time. And if you have any question, yeah, we are, we are welcome to, to ask. Okay, thank you, Abdul Haq. Thank you very much for the very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, indeed, geosteering is a high level uh, high level technology that's uh, really really exciting to share with uh, with the audience. And uh, thanks for sharing your expertise with us. So thanks again. Uh, you you started by really uh, breaking down the fundamentals of the geosteering history and the methods and uh, making some geosteering section. How we can make geosteering sections. And then finally, you discuss very interesting case studies and even uh, some recent uh, recent geosteering methods um, in, in, in the oil and gas. So I would remind our audience that you can ask your questions. Um, you can ask your questions to our, our, our speaker today. So um, you can ask your questions in the comment sections. I think we already have some questions over here. So let me... Uh, start picking up some some questions if, if you don't mind we can start the q a session um okay so um, we we'll start a question from facebook thank you for your presentation what can possibly go wrong if with if the geo steering goes outside the target layer i mean what would be the worst case scenario uh We cannot say worst case or best case because the best case is to stay within the reservoir all the time. We have situations where we exit the reservoir for various reasons, uh, but the idea is just to exit in the reservoir will cost us money, will cost time, and non production, non productive interval because we have to come back uh, to the reservoir as soon as possible and if we exit so that means we need more more meters to drill to come back it depends on the area sometimes we drill in reactive chains so the risk is huge if we continue drilling there we, we can have uh, drilling uh, issues uh, like stocks spice uh, bad losses. It depends. Okay. Thank you very much for your response. I will take another questions from LinkedIn this time. 
Question from uh, Muna from USA, from Colorado School of Mines. Thank for the great presentation, Abdel Haq. I'm not sure if I missed this, but I would like to ask if fiber optics are being involved in geosteering. Yes, this is what I mentioned in my last slide, or, or the one before, that we are trying now to include uh, data transmission using uh, fiber optic uh, or, or wired pipes, let's call it this way, to the, and in this way we bypass mud pulse uh, system, mission system. We already using this fiber optic in 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 wireline in uh, in seismic, and we are trying to include that also in uh, in, in drilling in drilling domain. Okay, thank you very much. We'll pick another questions from LinkedIn as well. For the Geosphere three hundred sixty, is the distance between the two D transverse inversion fixed? What is the minimum and what does this distance depend on? Can you transfer the, trans, the transverse inversion directly into a petrel model? Okay, the distance in, uh, uh, of the two transverse inversions is not fixed. We can, uh, we can define with the steps that we want the each inversion to be. Uh, based on what we know, what we want to see, the change. But uh, in the real world, there is less need of uh, put, like transverse inversion every one meter, because there is no need. There, there will be no change in one meter to run inver to the inverse uh, to the transverse inversion for that. So we select uh, usually ten meter step. And then if we uh, suspect in one zone to have uh, rapid change, we can uh, add more inversion and with different steps uh, to have more uh, resolution of the, of the detection or, or the solution. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Yes, we can yeah. uh, transfer everything into directly uh, and working uh, to be to, to have everything in the cloud and there is no need to 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 fix the machine or everything will be accessed the cloud uh, anywhere thank you thank you Abna, for the detailed response i'll pick another questions from facebook what is the average time what no what is the average what what is the average time uh, to complete a full geo steering job how many days or how many hours uh, from your experience it depends yeah it depends where you are doing if you are doing Algeria that takes uh, sometimes two weeks weeks to complete a uh, horizon section uh, it depends uh, depends on the hour of rate of penetration of the uh, of the well of the formation it depends how deep the, the, the reservoir is, how compact, how tight, uh, or I know the rig performance. Sometimes have issues rigs that take you more than expected. So in Algeria, average time of, uh, of the uh, horizontal well drain is two to Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and okay, I think finally um, everybody is thanking you for the great for the great presentation again. Uh, many thanks messages. I can see them in the comment sections. Thank you again. Have, before closing, I have one or maybe two questions. Okay, I will start with another one and then finish with another one. As um, you know, when we think about geo steering, we usually think about layered mediums. You know, um, horizontal drilling. But does it work for carbonate reservoir? I mean, do you know any? Have you tried any? Read any articles or worked in any carbonate in you know, an anisotropic reservoir where you have a lot of anisotropy and not really layered medium. Does it make a sense to do a geo steering, for example? Oh, uh, I think we lost your audio, Abdul Haq. If you can uh, join again. Yeah, we can we can't hear you, Abdul Haq. Can you please join again with the with the phone, please?
Oh, okay. I think we, uh, he said, uh, I lost the audio. Uh, so is there a way to, if, okay, let me just uh, check. So we apologize, our audience. Uh, we have some technical audio issues now we are trying to fix. <laughs> Actually, our closing, you know, we are, it's good that we <laughs> this problem <laughs> occurred at the end of the presentation. But if you can just uh, do the closing with the, with the audio, it's going to be fantastic. Okay, so I think, uh, yeah, we have some some technical issues we can't really solve for the time being. Um, uh, I think we can close this this uh, this webinar. Uh, thank you very much. We would like to really thank uh, Abdul Haq bin Khalifa for sharing his expertise with the audience and for uh, picking the questions. Um, and it was really, really interesting uh, topic today. So I would like to thank our audience also for uh, for attending this webinar. Thank you very much. And please stay with us with, uh, with the International Network of Algerian Scientists for next month webinar, where we are going to invite uh, one professor discussing about AVO analysis. So we are still dealing with uh, reservoir engineering this time. So uh, I would like to thank you again for your attendance and thank our keynote speaker, Abdul Haq. Sorry, we apologize for the audio problem and uh, see you next time. Thank you very much.